Welcome to the Turkey Hunter Podcast with me, your host, Andy Galliano. In this podcast, I share with turkey hunters just like you how to have more turkeys on your hunting property and how to have more successful turkey hunts. I teach you how to do this with tips and interviews with turkey hunting pros, wildlife management tips, and entertaining turkey hunting stories. Tune in weekly as I share proven and simple strategies to help you have more success this turkey season. Make sure to head over to www.iamturkeyhunting.com to subscribe to receive free turkey hunting tips, tactics, strategies, and product reviews. Also, please visit and like my Facebook fan page. Go to Facebook and search I Am Turkey Hunting, and also feel free to post your turkey hunting photos from this past season and let us know where and when you killed your bird. For all of you Twitter users out there, please follow me on Twitter, where my handle is at turkeyhitman, and I will be sure to follow you back. And now, for this week's show. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Turkey Hunter Podcast. You are listening to episode 107, A Day at the Range with the new Turkey Shotgun. And I am your host and the guy who is on the road. It's the road show today. So I'm headed south on I-65, looking at traffic going north on I-65, and all of that traffic is backed up going towards the downtown Birmingham area, but there is very little traffic headed south on I-65, so I'm doing my obligatory seven or eight miles per hour over the speed limit, even though I'm speeding a little bit. I'm not in a huge hurry to get there, because we're 125 days, 21 hours, 58 minutes, and five seconds away from opening day of spring turkey season in Alabama. We are right at four months. Right at four months. So pretty exciting news for me. I'm headed to the range. Actually, I'm headed to my property south of Birmingham. I've got a little shooting range set up there. Got my turkey shotgun with me. I've also got my rifle, or I should say one of my deer rifles, and I've got my muzzle loader with me because this coming week is muzzle loader season in Alabama, which is a whopping five day long season and then rifle season or gun season for everyone opens the following Saturday I think the date on that is something like the 20th 21st I can't even remember at this point but I've got my rifle a shotgun a four-wheel drive (laughs) I've got I've got my deer rifle, my muzzle loader, my shotgun, and yes, I'm in a four-wheel drive. I'm going to be checking in as I'm shooting, patterning, sighting in the shotgun. I do not have my rifle sights on the shotgun yet because I'm going to be sending it off to get it painted to get a Cerakote application put on it and it seemed kind of silly to me to actually sight the gun in with rifle sights knowing that I'm going to be shipping it off to get painted. So the reason that I'm shooting it now is because a couple of these chokes are extended tube chokes and since I'm going to have the gun painted if I end up shooting one of these extended tube chokes, then I want the choke painted the same color as the gun for no other reason than why not. So, like I said, I'll be checking in here shortly when I get to the property, get to the range, and get everything set up, and we get ready to touch off a few shots and talk a little bit about the kick, the pattern, and all that fun stuff that comes along with patterning and 
shooting shotguns for turkeys. So, talk to you guys soon. Okay, I am at the range. I've got everything laid out here before I get it all set up. Just want to kind of run through the list of what I've got. It's a little windy up here on top of the hill, so I apologize if you get some wind noise. We'll just deal with that, but let's run through the list here real quick. So I've got my stand for my target, which is actually a metal frame stand that a real estate for sale sign goes on because I have access to a lot of those. And I've got my targets, I've got chokes, I've got shells, I have packing tape to tape my target to the stand. A staple gun would probably work just as well, but putting a staple in around the stand, the wire stand would be a little bit more difficult than packing tape, so that's why I brought that. A hammer to drive it in the ground because it has not rained in 52 days in the area. And of course I've got guns. I've got my Caldwell lead sled because I am gonna be shooting my hunting rifles and I need a good solid stand or a good solid base. But I also want to use that to shoot the 20 gauge because I'm patterning and I want to know where the center of that pattern is hitting, if it's hitting in the center of the target or if it's off center a little bit. So I've also got my hearing protection and my shooting glasses. So I'm gonna get everything set up and check back in here in a minute and we'll touch off a couple of rounds and see what happens. Okay, so getting ready to shoot here. If you'll recall on that list of items that I read off to you of what I've got here at the range, one thing I did not read off was a choke wrench. So if you're ever at the range or out in the field and you need to change a choke on a Remington 870, a nickel, that's a 20 gauge, Remington 870 20 gauge, a nickel makes for a fine choke wrench. All right, let me get my eyes and ears in here. I've just got my eyes on, let me get my ears in. What did I do with my hearing protection? Grab that real quick, so, okay. Found my ears. So I've got the Heavy 13 Turkey Choke Tube system in the gun currently. That is Heavy Shots Choke that they have made that you can shoot with Heavy Shot Heavy 13 Turkey Shot Shells and all other lead high density loads. So it's an extended choke. It is non-ported. I've got first up firing through there, the heavy shot magnum blend, 20 gauge shells, three inches, one and one quarter ounce shot. And this is a five, six and seven blend. The box says these shoot at 1200 feet per second. So we're gonna touch one of these off now. Got my eyes and my ears in. I've got the safety on, shell in the chamber. Get on the rest here. Get a good solid rest, adjust my height on the lead sled. Got the bead pretty much on the bullseye. Gun's hot, safety's off. Adjust my height here a little bit more. That's what's taking me so long, so bear with me. All right, open the mag here. Gun is back on safe and I'm gonna walk the 40 yards down here and see what it looks like. Okay, decent pattern, but it's not great. There's some probably three inch holes in it scattered around. It actually looks like it's shooting a little bit high and left, although this would be a dead turkey as there is one pellet dead center in the bullseye. So. And there's actually, if I'm aiming at the waddles there, there are, I'd say, five, six pellets in the kill zone at 40 yards. I'm gonna count the number of pellets here in the 10 inch circle. So I've got my pen, gonna make some marks, count this up. The other thing I like to do, if the gun is shooting shells a little off 
center like this is shooting high and left, I like to try to find the most dense pellet pattern and put a nine or 10 inch circle around that and count the number of pellets because that would be the true center of that pattern. And with rifle sights, you can adjust that a little bit to account for your elevation and windage center of your pattern at your point of aim. So I'm gonna pause this real quick, count the number of pellets in this. I think it's actually about a nine and a half inch circle and then go to the next shell in the same choke. Okay, so the heavy shot Magnum blend five, six and sevens at 40 yards in a nine and a half inch circle, there are 44 pellets. I feel like if I moved this nine and a half inch circle high and left, I could pick up another 10 to 15 pellets. So you'd be looking at roughly 55 to 60 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle at 40 yards with that shell and choke combination. So I'm gonna try the next round through the same choke. So what I'm shooting now is Federal Premium Heavyweight Turkey. This is a 20 gauge, three inch, one and a half ounce of shot. So it's got a quarter of an ounce more shot because it's shooting number seven shot only through there. Muzzle velocity is listed at 1100 feet per second. So I've got a new target up down range. Still got my eyes and ears in and we're gonna rip one of these rounds off here. Safety on, shell in the chamber. We should still be lined up fairly close because there is not much recoil compared to running a three and a half inch, 12 gauge turkey load. This 20 gauge, three inches, quite nice, especially on this Caldwell lead sled. So, all right, going hot, safety off. Now that shell's got a little more kick to it. That Magnum blend from Heavy Shot does not kick as hard as that Federal Premium does. So before I go down range here, let's eject the shell. Safety back on, breech is open. Ah, I love the smell of gunpowder in the morning. God, smells good. Okay, check back in here in just a second after I walk down range. Okay, initial thoughts on this, of course, this is seven shot only, so you would expect to see a lot more pellets on the target. And I'm really pretty impressed with this round. It's shooting a little bit high and a little right. However, again, there would be a dead turkey. There are two pellets right in the bullseye on this one. Not as many pellets in the kill zone as the other shot. There's actually some fairly large gaps in this pattern with this shell, with this choke. but. I think overall, um, probably the center of the pattern is probably about four or five inches high and three to four inches right. So I'm going to check back in here in a minute, count the number of pellets on this round. We'll put the next choke in and fire the next round. Okay, actually after counting the number of pellets, this is much more impressive than the Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7. And again, you would expect that because there's more shot. One and a half ounces of shot in the Federal Heavyweight 20 gauge number sevens compared to one and a quarter ounces of shot in the Heavy Shot Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7. So again, you would expect to see more pellets in a nine and a half inch target at 40 yards, but almost double the number of pellets, 81 pellets. So 40 yards, the Federal Heavyweight put 81 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle, and again, the center of that pattern is a little bit high, a little bit right. If I move that over, I would expect to gain another probably 15 to 20 pellets. Not very bad. Another thing that I thought was pretty impressive is I walk down and grab the target off of the frame that it's on and the wad from that heavyweight shell was about four steps away from the target. So that shell is designed for the wad to travel with the shot 
farther downfield, and I truly believe that it does that after seeing this wadding being about 35, 36 yards downrange. Okay, so we're gonna pause, put in the new choke, and pick back up here in just a second. Okay, so I've got the new choke in. This is Jeb's Precision Choke Tubes. I've got the Headhunter Custom Turkey Choke in there, of course, in a 20 gauge, a .565 constriction on this choke. So this is a little bit tighter choke than the heavy shot choke, which is a .575. So supposedly these heavier than lead shells are going to shoot better out of a, a more open choke. We're going to start off with the heavy shot magnum blend round in the Remington 870 Express. Safety's on, chamber's closed. Got the jebs in, it's tight, secure, going hot, safety off. Again, the recoil on that heavy shot is not terrible, especially not on this lead sled. Okay, so safety on, open the breech here, going back on the rest, get me a quick sniff of the shell. Okay, <laughs> I'm going down range. All right, initial thoughts. Again, probably a dead turkey. Again, that round is shooting left. I believe the center of the pattern is probably dead on up and down, but a little bit left. We cut this target down here and get a pellet count. I do see some very significant gaps, very significant gaps in this pattern. Even in looking at the center of the pattern, I can put one of the gaps runs all the way from the bottom of my palm to about an inch above my middle finger in height. In width, it's not quite as bad. It's actually kind of an L-shaped gap. So if I go to the, to the leg of the L, it's pretty close, bottom of my palm to the tip of my middle finger. So that L-shaped gap there, if I centered this pattern, it would be in the nine and a half inch circle. So that's a little concerning to me in looking at this round and choke combination. But I'm gonna count the number of pellets in the nine and a half inch circle and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so comparing the heavy shot Magnum blend five, six, and seven with the heavy shot choke to the Jeb's choke. It appears to be a much more consistent pattern with the heavy shot choke than we got with the Jeb's choke. Again, that could have everything to do with the constriction. A point five seven five constriction on the heavy shot choke versus a point five six five constriction on the Jeb's choke. So. I've got the next target up. We're gonna fire off the Federal Premium Heavyweight with the Jeb's Choke and see how it does. All right, so the Jeb's Headhunter Choke is in. The gun, check it, make sure it's still hand tight, and it is. Here goes the Federal Heavyweight number sevens. Safety is on. Shell in the chamber, closed up. Safety, make sure I can see the bullseye here. It's a little faint. Maybe it's just my eyes. Yeah, that little shell right there kicks. Okay. <laughs> Open up the chamber here. Get me a quick smell. Ah, that's good stuff. Safety on. Going back in the rest. Walking down range. Check back in here in a second. Okay, initial thoughts here. This one may be shooting a little bit low and a little bit left. Not much though. If I do that, I'm gonna take out one pretty big gap in the pattern. This pattern just initially seems to have fewer gaps in it than that heavy shot choke had with the Federal Premium Heavyweight shells in it. So I'm gonna pull this target down and count pellets. Okay, so the Jibs Federal Heavyweight number seven combination. At 40 yards, there are 
74 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. If I were to move this circle over to the center of the pattern, I would probably pick up again, I'm gonna guess 20 more pellets with this one. So very similar to the heavy choke with those same shells. All right, I've got a new target up. We're gonna try a new choke, which is the Carlson's Turkey Choke. It is a .575 constriction as well. The only difference in this choke is that it is not an extended tube choke. So I've gotta break my trusty nickel back out. I'm in my choke wrench and change chokes here. Be back in a second, fire off a few more rounds. All right, I've changed the choke out. I am putting a heavy shot magnum blend in the gun. The safety is on. Gun back in the rest. Adjust my rest up a little bit here. Safety off, gun's hot. There is a shadow right over the bullseye. So I'm having a hard time seeing the bullseye here. Let's go check this one out. Let's clear the gun here. Get it on safe. Pull that shell out, get my, my little fix of gunpowder there, and go down range. Check back in in a second. Okay, initial thought. This pattern is much more open. It is high, I don't know. It's, it's definitely left. The center of the pattern is definitely to the left of the bullseye. I'm pretty sure I was on the bullseye there when the gun went off, even though I couldn't see it real well. So some of that could be me. I don't think so, given the fact that this shell has shot left in this gun in every single choke. I'm going to, there, there are some significant gaps in this pattern with this choke. So I'm gonna pull the target down, get a pellet count, and we'll move on to the next shell. Okay, so the Carlson's choke tube with the heavy shot Magnum blend, five, six, and seven shells gave me 37 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle at 40 yards. I think if I move this nine and a half inch circle over to the center of the pattern, I'm probably again gonna pick up 10 to 15 additional pellets. Remember the same shell in the Jeb's choke tube had 37 pellets in the nine and a half inch circle and the same shell shot through the heavy shot choke tube, put 44 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. Now, despite the fact that the Carlson's does have some gaps in it, I'd still be eating turkey tonight. All right, the last target is up. We're gonna fire the last round through the Carlson's and I'm gonna stick a fork in this part of the show about the turkey hunting shotgun. I have another box of shells. I actually have heavy shot, heavy 13 to shoot through these chokes. However, I didn't get the number sixes like I wanted. I got the number four shot, and I know that the number four shot is going to be significantly different than the number six shot. So I actually want to get a box of number sixes and shoot those shells through these three chokes and compare all three rounds through the three different chokes and use that to help me figure out which one of these is gonna be a part of the hunting arsenal going forward. So I'm gonna load the gun here. Again, this is the Carlson's choke. Putting the Federal Premium Heavyweight round in here. Safety's on. Drop the shell on the ground. That's never good. Round in the chamber, safety on. Breach is closed and gun's hot man <laughs> those shells kick give me a little snort here safety's on shells out of the chamber breach is open i'm gonna walk down here and check her out see how it did okay initial thoughts the pattern is almost dead center on the target this pattern may be an inch or two inches. The center of this pattern may be an inch or two inches left of center, but not much. This pattern has very few gaps in it. 
and I'm excited to count the number of pellets because there are a bunch of them in here. And yes, this is definitely, without a doubt, a dead turkey. So I'm gonna pull this target down and we'll get a pellet count. Well, I told you my initial thoughts are that that Carlson's choke actually shot those Federal Heavyweight number sevens better than the other two chokes. And my initial thoughts were correct. So the Carlson's turkey choke with a .575 constriction put 107 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle at 40 yards. Compare that to the Federal Heavyweight number seven with the Jeb's choke, that was 74 pellets. Compare that with the heavy shot choke with the Federal Heavyweights number sevens, that was 81 pellets. So that's 20% more pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. Now again, the heavy shot choke and the Jeb's choke did not put the center of the pattern on the bullseye. The Carlson's choke, I feel like if I moved it over, let's say two inches, I might pick up five more pellets. Whereas I feel like with the Jebs, I'd pick up 20 more. And with the Federal Heavyweight, I would pick up significantly more. There's 81 pellets in there. I, I would be shocked if it doesn't pick up another 20 or so pellets. I'm gonna move the center of the pattern to the bullseye on these targets when I get back in the studio and give you the, my final thoughts on these shells and these chokes. But it looks like as of right now, the, I think that Carlson's choke was about 20 bucks compared to roughly $40 for the heavy shot choke compared to roughly $65 for the Jeb's choke. And it looks like the cheaper choke is outperforming the more expensive chokes. So I'm gonna to touch off a couple of rounds again with my rifle and my muzzle loader. And I'm gonna call it a day at the range, an absolutely gorgeous day. I'd love to stay out here and go fishing today, but I guess I need to get some work done. So, hey, I'll check back in with you guys in a, in a bit when I get in the studio and can check these targets out. Okay, so I am back in the studio and I'm still on my lapel mic. So that's why the audio is a little bit different than normal in the studio but I wanted to keep the audio the same throughout this episode. So what I have done is I've gotten the same nine and a half inch circle that I used to make these targets. And I have moved that nine and a half inch circle to where I feel like the highest concentration of pellets on the target is. Now that may or may not be the center of the pattern for each of these shells and choke combinations, but I wanted to get an idea of the highest amount of penetration or the highest concentration of pellets, I should say, for each one of these combos. So here's what I've got. And when I'm looking at these, I'm going to explain what I'm looking at as far as where the highest concentration of pellets is, but also where I feel like the center of the pattern is because when I get my rifle sights on the gun, I really want the gun zeroed in to the center of the pattern. That would be an ideal world. And I would want the center of the pattern to be where the highest concentration of pellets is in that ideal world. And so that may or may not be the case with each of these shell and choke combinations. So let's get into this. So I'm gonna go through these in the same order that I shot them, all right? So the first one that I'm looking at here is the heavy shot choke with the Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7 shot. So that's the heavy shot Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7. All right, so the highest concentration of pellets on this piece of paper is five and a half inches left and four inches high which is what I told you guys when I was shooting that I felt like the center of the pattern was high and left. Well, that pretty much is the center of the pattern, what I'm looking at there. It is high and left. And the highest concentration of pellets is pretty close to the center of the pattern. So when I move the nine and a half inch circle to that 
heaviest or highest concentration of pellets that's five and a half inches left and four inches high, I actually am able to pick up 20 more pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. So the pattern is much improved. There still is, I'm gonna guess, a baseball size hole in the pattern on the far left-hand side of the circle. And there are several, what I would say are probably golf ball size holes. So I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five golf ball size holes in this pattern. Now, there's no big enough gap with these holes in the pattern to where I feel like I would miss a turkey. With 64 pellets and a nine and a half inch circle at 40 yards, you can be pretty sure that you're gonna kill the turkey if his head is within that nine and a half inch circle shooting these shells and this choke combination. All right, so what I'm not real crazy about though is the five and a half inches left, four inches high. But again, with rifle sights, I can adjust for that. So I'm not terribly worried about that. So let's look at now the federal heavyweight shot with the same choke. So I told you when we were at the range that I felt like that pattern was a little high and right, and I was right. The highest concentration of pellets in this pattern is four and a quarter inches right and five inches high. So it's a pretty big difference there. But when I make a new nine and a half inch circle and the center of that circle is four and a quarter inches right and five inches high of the bullseye on the existing nine and a half inch circle, I pick up an additional 23 pellets, bringing the total pellet count with the federal heavyweight number seven shot in the heavy shot choke to 104 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. As far as gaps go with a pattern with this combination, I see one, two, three, four, eh, we'll say five. Five golf ball size holes in this pattern. But again, I feel like if there's a turkey's head anywhere in that nine and a half inch circle, that we're gonna fill a tag with this shell and choke combination. So with the heavy shot choke, it actually is putting more of the federal heavyweight number seven pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. And again, we would expect that because there are more pellets in those shells. 104 versus 64. The center of the pattern with that heavy shot choke and those federal heavyweights in my gun is pretty close to that four and a quarter inches right, five inches high, the highest concentration of pellets. But I'm gonna say that the center of, pat of the pattern is probably more like four inches high and three and a quarter inches right. That's probably the center of the pattern with that choke and shell combination. Okay, so with the Jeb's Headhunter Choke and the Heavy Shot Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7 shot at 40 yards, the highest concentration of pellets on the target is about three inches left and one and a half inches low of the bullseye on the existing nine and a half inch circle. So when I make a new nine and a half inch circle, this three inches left and one and a half inches low of the existing one, I bring in an additional eight pellets. So that brings the total pellet count on that shell in nine and a half inches at 45. Now to compare apples to apples, the heavy shot choke has 19 more pellets than the Jeb's choke shooting the heavy shot Magnum Blend shells. So you would kind of figure that a heavy shot choke would shoot heavy shot shells better than a Jeb's choke would shoot heavy shot shells, and it does to the tune of 19 pellets better. All right, so when I'm looking at this pattern, where I see the highest concentration of pellets is not really where the center of the pattern is. The center of this pattern is probably where the existing bullseye is, but I'm going to say nine inches to the left. 
is the center of the pattern, and that is not where the highest concentration of pellets is with this choke and shell combination. So I'm going to rule out the Jeb's Headhunter choke with the Heavy Shot Magnum Blend 567. So that combination there is gone. All right, now I'm not giving up on the Jeb's because we still have the Federal Heavyweight number seven to look at with the Jeb's Headhunter choke. So what I see here on this target is the highest concentration of pellets appears to be about three inches left and about two inches low compared to the center of the existing nine and a half inch circle. By moving the nine and a half inch circle three inches left and two inches low, we actually bring in an additional 14 pellets to bring the total number of pellets in the Jeb's Headhunter Choke with the Federal Heavyweight number sevens to 88 pellets. Again, to compare that apples to apples with the Federal Heavyweight number sevens through the Heavy Shot Choke, you're actually getting 16 more pellets in a nine and a half inch circle with the Heavy Shot Choke and those Federal Heavyweight number sevens. So the Jebs is out. Now, I'm not saying 88 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle is shabby because it's not. And when you look at this pattern, it's pretty well spread out. There's one gap, two gaps, three. There are really three golf ball size gaps in that pattern. So it is not a bad pattern at all. And to throw 88 pellets into that circle at 40 yards is pretty dang strong. All right, so moving on. The last choke was the Carlson's Turkey Choke, and it is not an extended tube choke. And that choke cost about, I think, $20 to $25 online. In looking at, first, the Carlson's Choke with the Heavy Shot Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7s, to find the highest concentration of pellets on the paper, you have to move the bullseye and the nine and a half inch circle five inches left and one and a half inches high. And when you do that, you pick up an additional eight pellets from the existing nine and a half inch circle. So that brings the total pellet count to 45. So by cherry picking where the highest concentration of pellets is, you're able to get eight more pellets in a nine and a half inch circle with this choke and shell combination. Gaps, there are quite a few gaps in here. There's one gap that is close to baseball size. There's a golf ball, a golf ball. I'm gonna say a racquetball because it's really too big to be a golf ball and too small to be a baseball. You got another golf ball and another golf ball. So one, two, three, four golf balls, a racquetball and a baseball size gap. That is not a very consistent pattern. There shouldn't be that many gaps in a pattern with your shotgun choke and shell combination. So to compare apples to apples with that one, we're looking for a winner here. The Heavy Shot Magnum Blend 5, 6, and 7 with the Heavy Shot Choke got 64 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. The Carlson's got 45 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle. The Carlson's seems to have more gaps in it than the Heavy Shot choke does with those shells. So we're ruling out the Carlson's choke with the Heavy Shot Magnum Blend shells. We've got one more combination to compare here, and that is the Carlson's choke, that's the Carlson's turkey choke, with the Federal Heavyweight number seven shells. To get the highest concentration of pellets in a nine and a half inch circle, I have to move that circle two and one quarter inches to the left. When I do that, I pick up nine more pellets compared to the pattern inside the original nine and a half inch circle that I drew on the target. So that brings a total pellet count with that shell and choke combination to 116 pellets inside a nine and a half inch circle 
at 40 yards with the Carlson's turkey choke with a .575 constriction and the Federal Heavyweight number sevens. To compare that apples to apples with the heavy shot choke and the Federal Heavyweight number sevens, the heavy shot choke has 104 pellets when I move the nine and a half inch circle to the highest concentration of pellets compared to 116 with the Carlson's. And in addition to that, the Carlson's shoots better. The center of the pattern is pretty much where the bullseye is on the existing target. The highest concentration of pellets just happens to be about two and a quarter inches left of that. Compared to the center of the pattern with the heavy shot choke and the federal heavyweights, number sevens, being about three inches right and four inches high of the bullseye in the existing nine and a half inch circle. So, in summary, what I have so far is a Carlson's turkey choke that is not an extended tube choke that shoots federal heavyweight number sevens better than the Jeb's choke does and better than the heavy shot choke does. As far as gaps in this pattern, well, there are two that you could put a golf ball in. So this is a much more consistent pattern. If you put a turkey's head inside this nine and a half inch circle, you're gonna end up with at least 20 to 25 pellets in a turkey's head. Not all in the kill zone, but in a turkey's head at 40 yards with the Carlson's choke and the federal heavyweight number sevens. So as of right now, it looks like that inexpensive Carlson's choke is what is staying in the Remington 870 that I have. I still want to try the heavy shot, heavy 13 shells with the Jeb's choke and with the heavy shot choke and with the Carlson's as well to see if those shells in a number six outperform these federal heavyweights in a number seven. What I will tell you is that the Heavy shot, magnum blend, five, six, and sevens do not outperform them. Now, you heard me saying this while I was shooting today, the recoil in those federal heavyweight number seven shells is, I would say, 20 to 25% heavier than the recoil is shooting those heavy shot, magnum blend, five, six, and sevens. So, that's something that you might want to keep in mind if you're buying this gun for a youth who's getting into turkey hunting, those federal heavyweights do kick pretty hard. Okay, so I'm making progress with this new turkey gun. I still have a couple of things that I need to do to it. One of those being to send it off for its sexy little paint job. The other to shoot those heavy shot, heavy 13 shells through each of those three chokes. But I might just look at another choke with a little bit more open constriction. So what I'm seeing is that these looser constriction chokes with a .575 constriction have outperformed the tighter constriction choke, that Jeb's choke, which is a .565, pretty significantly. So I may see if a little bit more open choke might give me a little bit better pattern with these shells, but I'm not gonna play with it too much because 116 pellets in a nine and a half inch circle at 40 yards is extremely good and plenty good enough to kill a turkey at that distance. All right, so we'll probably take another trip to the range. It likely won't be next week. It may be a couple of months from now, but we'll take another trip to the range with another choke and some more shells. We'll throw some lead downrange or some tungsten steel downrange and we'll see what I end up with as far as choke and shell combination that shoots best out of this little Remington 870 that I have. So that does it for today's show, but before I cut you loose, I want to ask one favor of you this week, and that is if you enjoyed this week's show and you learned a little bit of something from the show, then please go to iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Player FM, wherever you're listening to the show, and leave a five-star rating and a review. That is very helpful. It helps people who are looking around, searching for shows, 
to be able to decide whether or not they want to listen to this one. And if you learned something from the show today and you leave a review with the podcast player that you're listening to this episode on, mentioning that you've learned something from the show, then most likely if somebody has an interest in turkey hunting, they're going to listen to this show and we'll gain another listener. We'll gain another family member. And that's what we're trying to do here. If you'll do me that one big favor, I'd be very appreciative. Hey, all of you veterans out there, tomorrow's Veterans Day, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your service for our country. I know that the people who listen to this show support you. I support you. We all appreciate you, and we hope that you have a fantastic Veterans Day and If you're currently serving in the military, stay safe. Our prayers are with you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. I know that you have choices, and I appreciate you spending your time with us. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. You were just listening to the Turkey Hunter podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please go on over to iTunes and leave a five-star review. And make sure to head over to www.iamturkeyhunting.com to subscribe for free turkey hunting tips, tactics, strategies, and product reviews to help you have a more successful turkey season. And stay tuned for upcoming episodes on hunting afternoon birds, how to film your hunt, and the breeding cycle of hens, as well as some guest interviews. Thanks again for listening. We know your time is valuable, and we appreciate you sharing some of it with us. See you next week.